Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a review on five different body sunscreens. One of my most frequently asked questions is what sunscreens do you use on your body? So this is actually going to be part one of a two-part video. I was gonna put everything into one video and then I was like, that's gonna be about 10 to 11 sunscreens. Too much for one video. So this is part one. In this video, we'll be reviewing Sun Bum, Banana Boat, Ocean Potion, and two different copper tone formulations. Some I love, some I like, some I don't really love or like at all. So you'll hear my thoughts on these formulas, some of the ingredient highlights, which consistencies are my favorites, and I will show you application clips of all of these so you can see what they look like, if they have a white cast, if they look greasy on the skin, everything that you want to know. So if you want to hear my thoughts on these sunscreens, let's jump right into it. Okay, before we talk about each sunscreen individually, I thought I would start off by answering a couple questions you guys have asked me about body sunscreens. So if you guys have watched any of my other sunscreen reviews, then you have heard me say before that I make sure that I'm using at least one sunscreen that has mineral active ingredients in it and that has zinc oxide in it. So a lot of you have asked, is that the same thing for body sunscreen? Do you only use mineral sunscreens for the body or do you use just chemical filters only? So. When it comes to body sunscreens, I will use sunscreens that have chemical active ingredients only and that do not have zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. There are a few different reasons for that. The first is that finding cosmetically elegant sunscreen formulations for the body that include zinc oxide is very difficult. So zinc oxide is an ingredient that is thicker, harder to blend, feels heavy on the skin and leaves a white cast. In facial sunscreen formulations, it's often mixed with chemical active ingredients to make it have a thinner, more lightweight finish. Not all the time, but sometimes. Or it can be mixed with other ingredients that just make it more, again, cosmetically elegant. But that kind of formulation seems to be a lot easier to find in a face sunscreen. Of course, there are body sunscreens that have zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide, but many of them are heavy and thick and just not something that you want to be reapplying through the day which is what's most important when it comes to sunscreen is wearing it in the first place on a daily basis and then reapplication especially on the body if you're out in the sun it's important to make sure that you're reapplying and you're a lot less likely to do that if the formula is just kind of sticky and thick and gross and i just haven't found one from the drugstore that i'm obsessed with and when i have good drugstore options that are affordable for the body, I'm just gonna do that and not spend all of this extra money on a mineral body sunscreen when I enjoy these just fine. You know, when you're five foot 10, you have a lot of ground to cover for a sunscreen. You use a lot more sunscreen than somebody who's five foot two, let's say. So that actually would be pretty pricey for me to only use those kinds of sunscreens. So to answer that question, I am not as nitpicky with the active ingredients in my body sunscreens as I am on the face. Another question I have been asked quite a few times is if I only use fragrance-free body sunscreens, kind of in the same way that I do for my face. I have very few products that have added fragrant components because I have sensitive skin and acne prone skin and I like to play it safe. Again, I'm not as nitpicky when it comes to body sunscreens because that is another category where it's difficult to find really nice sunscreens that are free from all forms of fragrance, that apply well, that don't leave an unpleasant residue or have an unpleasant odor. And again, the most important thing for me is to make sure that I'm reapplying throughout the day. My body is not sensitive. My face is sensitive. My body is not acne prone my face is. So it's not a concern for me in the same way that it is my face. Of course, if you do have skin concerns like eczema or psoriasis on the body, then that's still going to be something that you may want to factor in. And I totally understand that there are going to be some of you watching that still need fragrance-free sunscreen for the body like you do for the face. So a couple of these are fragrance-free. It's really going to just be up to you, your unique skin type, and how your skin responds. So normally in my skincare videos, I don't talk about scent or the smell of a product at all because I would prefer it to not have one. And if it has a scent, it's probably because it has added fragrance that's likely to irritate my skin but in this situation because most have fragrance I will describe what it smells like 
and for the ones that are fragrance free too, because I feel like that's important. If something's free of fragrance and you're rubbing it all over your body and it smells rancid, then you're probably not gonna reapply it, right? Okay. All right, let's start right off with the Ocean Potion SPF 50 Sunscreen Lotion. That rhymed. This has 6.8 fluid ounces and retails for $16.59. This is a broad spectrum SPF 50, meaning it will protect you from both UVA rays and UVB rays, and it says that it's water resistant for 80 minutes. This one is oxybenzone free and reef friendly. As far as the inactive ingredients here, there are a variety of different emollient ingredients that that are going to help to soften and smooth the skin, which is ideal in a sunscreen. I wanna make sure that it's something that feels nourishing and hydrating on the skin and is not going to feel overly dry or sticky. It also does have aloe towards the top of the ingredient label, which is a skin soothing ingredient. If you're out in the sun for long periods of time, that is a great ingredient to have included in a sunscreen. Hopefully you don't have a sunburn, but I know accidents happen and that can help to soothe that, especially if you're putting sunscreen over a sunburn. But again, hopefully that's not happening to begin with. This also does have a few plant extracts and antioxidants that are going to continue to help to moisturize, soften, smooth, and condition the skin. So across the board here for these body sunscreens, while they do have a couple nice ingredients, None of them are amazing or incredibly noteworthy, and that's something, again, that I'm fine with because it's not my face. I'm much more nitpicky about my face, and while yes, I still do care what I'm putting on my body, I'm not like, oh my gosh, this doesn't have niacinamide or 500 different antioxidants, can't use it. Like, I just want something that's affordable, that feels nice, that doesn't have any overly concerning ingredients in it. I forgot to say, this does have glycerin, another amazingly hydrating ingredient. So this one is not fragrance free. This does have added fragrance and it is towards the top of the ingredient label. On the front it says it has the scent of sunshine. And boy, if that's not true, like this is what sunshine would smell like if it had a smell. I am obsessed with this smell, oh my gosh. One of the reasons is because I just grew up using Ocean Potion. This is the sunscreen that my mom always purchased for us when we were little, and I just have memories of applying this at the water park. It just reminds me of being a kid, but it smells so good. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So, love the scent there, actually. It's not too overpowering, but I would say out of all of them, it's the most apparent scent. If you're super particular about smells and you don't want something that has any kind of a lingering scent at all, then I would probably avoid this. But keep in mind, I am so nitpicky about scents and things that are overly sweet or just too much. And this is perfection for me, but I know everybody's different. So might not be for you, but I love it. The formula of this one is oh, so, good i freaking love this sunscreen you guys it is so soft and conditioning if you could turn a conditioner into a sunscreen without it being sticky it would be this if that makes any sense at all it probably doesn't but that's kind of just how i think of it in the same way that a conditioner is very soft and nourishing on the ends of your hair so is this on the body it feels so so good and the thing I love about this formulation is it blends into the skin so beautifully and dries down to almost like a demi matte finish. It's not dry and flat by any means. It still looks really nice on the skin, but it doesn't dry down to that really dewy finish that a lot of body sunscreens do. And while, I mean, you guys know, I love a good glow. Sunscreens like that that are super dewy are often very sticky and feel kind of gross underneath clothes. And again, is something that's not the best to reapply. So this dries down beautifully. I seriously love it so much. Can't recommend it enough. No white cast, of course. We don't have zinc oxide in here. It's just such a good option. So is this my favorite? Mm, there's pros and cons. I think this might be my all-time favorite though. Next, we have Sun Bum's Premium Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotion. This one is a broad spectrum SPF 30. I believe they have this same formula in an SPF 50. They just didn't have it at my drugstore when I was picking it up. This also says it's water resistant for 80 minutes. And this one says it's gluten-free and vegan. Does this say anything about that, if that's a concern? This one's gluten-free as well. Doesn't claim to be vegan. This one has six fluid ounces and retails for $14.99. 
active ingredients here are avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. Is that the same as this? Same active ingredients, just in different percentages. So no oxybenzone, which I know is a concern for many people. And this one doesn't really have much that I wanna call out in specific for the inactive ingredients. The second ingredient on the label is something, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that right now. I'll put the word right here. I mean, I'm not even gonna try to butcher that. That ingredient is something that helps to stabilize avobenzone. That is a chemical active ingredient that is not the most stable. And it also is just supposed to help to give products a really silky moisturizing consistency. So love that. Other than that, really not much else. There are different silicone-based ingredients and emollients that help to give it a nice slippery, lightweight feel. This is not fragrance-free, so it does have added synthetic fragrance, but no other essential oils or anything like that. The one ingredient I did want to call out, which, again, I'm not even gonna try. We'll put it right here. Is the very last ingredient on the label, and that is a type of preservative that is definitely something that has been shown to be an irritant for certain people and potentially cause sensitization long term. So keep that in mind. There is probably not that much added since it's the very last ingredient on the label. But if you happen to have an allergy to that specific preservative or you just have skin that's incredibly sensitive, then this might not be something that works for you. Again, I'm never calling out particular ingredients like that to make anyone feel afraid. It's probably not going to be a big deal, but in case. Mm. This one smells really good too. This is still my favorite as far as the scent goes. This one's a little bit more toned down than that, I think. So if you still want kind of a pleasant scent, but just maybe not something as bright as this, then this would be a good option. It just smells like summer and sand. That scent of sunshine, this is scent of the beach. I don't know. And then the consistency of this one is really nice as well. It's definitely not as conditioning feeling as this Ocean Potion one, but in saying that, it does feel more lightweight on the skin. So I think some of you would prefer this if you just want something that is even a little bit lighter. The one downside is that this does take a little bit longer to blend into the skin than that Ocean Potion one. It's nothing bad or nothing that bugs me. It is just a small difference that I noticed, but again, it's a little bit lighter weight and does have more of a glowy finish on the skin than the Ocean Potion one. Next up, we have one of Banana Boat's newer sunscreens, and this is their Light as Air Sunscreen Lotion. Again, it's a broad spectrum SPF 50 that has 80 minutes of water resistance. It's supposed to have weightless protection, absorb quickly, and be non-greasy. This has six fluid ounces of product in it and retails for $7.99, so definitely more affordable than those first two. And the active ingredients here, again, are the same. So avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. No oxybenzone and no mineral active ingredients. And then as far as the inactive ingredients, this one definitely has fewer than those first two sunscreens. So it definitely could be a better option for those of you that have sensitive skin or skin that's irritated easily because there are just less ingredients to potentially cause issues for you. So this just also has a variety of emollients to help to soften and smooth the skin. It does have glycerin to help to moisturize. And this has two ingredients that I really like, but they're the very last two ingredients on the label. So the first is panthenol, which is a moisturizing ingredient. That's the same thing as vitamin B5. And then the last is aloe, which we talked about earlier. That's very last though. So there's probably not that much of those two ingredients added. And then this one does have added synthetic fragrance, but there are no other fragrant components in it. This one, oh my gosh, you guys, when I first felt it, I was like, okay, I actually know what they mean by light as air. It truly is. It's the most lightweight of the three that we've talked about so far. Oh my goodness. If you just really don't like the feel of a thicker sunscreen, even the ones that are moisturizing, but a little bit on the thicker side, then this one is going to be the one for you. It is incredibly lightweight. Like it says, it absorbs into the skin very quickly. It does not look greasy or oily on the skin at all, which makes it a better option for those of you that just don't like to put clothes on top of greasy sunscreen. I hate that feeling too. When you're sweating and you have sunscreen on and then you try to throw on a cover up over your swimsuit, ugh, ugh. That just doesn't feel good. So this one is actually amazing for that. And I would say it's the perfect blend between a softer matte and a hydrating sunscreen. So it doesn't leave my skin feeling dry 
or unmoisturized just because it's lightweight. It still does have hydrating properties to it, but it dries down very, very nicely. So I love that. And then I forgot to say the smell, honestly, you guys is so subtle. You can hardly smell it. What I can smell has a very nice smell. I would say it's kind of similar to sun Balm, but even less potent. Not that this is potent at all, because I don't think it is, but it's just barely there. So this one's gonna be for you if you want almost nothing, but just a little bit so that it doesn't smell funky. Oh, such a good one. I love that this is the most affordable so far. I really, really, really am loving having this in my collection. All right, let's move on to the first of the two copper tone sunscreens that I have. This is actually a water baby sunscreen. And the reason that I picked it up is because this one is fragrance free. So this is again, a broad spectrum SPF 50, 80 minutes of water resistance, no oxybenzone, and it also does not have any dyes in it. So because of that, because of the no additional fragrance, it's supposed to be gentler on the skin. This has the exact same active ingredients, avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene, again, just in different percentages. And this one has an even smaller ingredient label than that banana boat sunscreen. So again, probably a better option if you have very sensitive skin. There really is nothing noteworthy in here that I wanna mention aside from aloe, which is the second ingredient. The formula of this one is, I would say like medium thickness. It's not a super thick sunscreen. It's not as lightweight as that banana boat one, but it actually feels lighter on the skin, in my opinion, than Ocean Potion does. The thing that does not end up feeling super lightweight about it though, is that it does have a bit of a tackiness and stickiness to it once it's rubbed into the skin. So it's pretty easy to blend in but it does have kind of a lasting tack to it, whereas that Ocean Potion one does not at all, even though that one feels a little bit heavier. So that is definitely a downside. I don't love that, but it does make your skin look glowy, so. So if you do need a sunscreen that is completely free of all forms of fragrance, this is a good option. It doesn't feel gross on the skin by any means. It's not something that's totally unpleasant. It's just not my favorite formulation. Let's see if this has a smell. I can't remember. Oh, yes, I do. Oh! <sighs> anyway, I forgot I actually do really like the smell of this as far as a fragrance-free option goes. Out of all of the fragrance-free body products that I've tried, both sunscreen and lotions included, a lot of them just smell gross, unfortunately, and that's not the case with this one. At least, I don't think it is. So. Good option, definitely not my first pick or my favorite, but for some of you, I know that this is going to be one of the few options that you have. And finally, we have the Copper Tone Pure and Simple Sunscreen. This one says it has 100% natural botanicals, which always makes me suspicious. Again, it's a broad spectrum SPF 50, 80 minutes of water resistance. I've repeated myself so many times, but that's the same for all of these. This one has no oxybenzone, no dyes, and no fragrance either. So this is our second option for those of you that need fragrance-free skincare. And this is the only one that has mineral active ingredients in it. The only active ingredient is 24% zinc oxide. This one also has six fluid ounces, but retails for $9.99 just because of the addition of zinc oxide. So I actually reviewed this exact same sunscreen for the face in an affordable sunscreen review. I will put a card for that here and link it below. And looking through the ingredients, I was like, is this the exact same sunscreen? And it almost is. There are just a couple differences which is interesting. I just feel like typically sunscreens that are formulated for the face are quite different than the same sunscreen for the body, but that's not really the case here. So a lot of those ingredient highlights that I called out in that video are the same here as well. And thankfully the natural botanicals are not essential oils or fragrant plant extracts. So this still is considered to be truly fragrance free. And of those plant extracts, it does have a few nice ones that have antioxidant properties and skin soothing properties like green tea extract, kelp extract, and lotus extract. Other than that, not really anything I need to mention here. This one is definitely the thickest out of all of the ones that I've talked about so far. It's a little bit harder to blend into the skin. And while it does feel nice and conditioning, 
it still is not the most comfortable formulation of all time. I think for some this would feel a little bit greasy. It doesn't feel horribly greasy to me, but just in comparison to those other ones that we have talked about. And unfortunately, this one does leave a little bit of a white cast on me because of that zinc oxide. So that is a big bummer. It's not horrible. It's not something that's incredibly noticeable, but I'm not somebody with deep to dark skin. In that case, it probably would not work for you. So formulation is not my favorite. This one does feel slightly sticky as well. And this one has almost the exact same smell as Water Babies. It might just have a tiny bit of a saltier scent. It's hardly noticeable. I feel like most people that are not like me and psycho about smells would think that these just smell the same and there's nothing offensive about the smells. They're not going to be things that you can smell on yourself throughout the day. So that one works if you need something that's mineral and fragrance free, but it's probably my least favorite formulation out of all of these. All right, you guys, so that is everything for this video. Those are all the sunscreens that I wanted to talk through today. I hope this helped you guys pick out one that sounds like it might be a fit for you. If you did enjoy this and find it helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell because like I said, this is only part one. I do have a part two coming soon with even more affordable body sunscreen options. If you guys do use any of the sunscreens that I talked through today in this video, you will have to let me know in the comments below. Did I talk through one of your favorites? Are you interested in trying any of these after watching this video? We can chat in the comments. If there's anything else that you guys would like to see from me next on this channel, leave a comment for that as well. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.